ready and she know it already. Shake the money, make her eyes raining like a fetty. Welcome to the belly of the beast, the den of the Illuminati, home of the almighty media. That's how powerful we are, that's how influential we are. And we're not stopping anytime soon, so get used to it. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Who's Number One podcast. We've got a fun show for you guys today. I've got a couple guests. Of course, we're keeping in the theme here. We're talking a lot more about Who's Next, Season 1. Episode 5 just dropped today. So if you have not seen it, this is an awesome episode. One of my favorite episodes from the entire season. It's got a fun challenge. And I think, honestly, one of the best fights from the entire season. Jansen uh, Gomez versus Renee Souza. So if you guys have not seen Episode 5, uh, make sure you pause this, jump on flowgrappling.com, jump on whosnextseries.com and watch. You can watch all five episodes for free on Flow Grappling, so no excuse if you haven't seen these things. It's a crazy ride, right, Corey? It's been a wild one, uh, so hopefully you guys are following along. We got some guests coming on the show today. It is going to be a fun one, like always, but uh, let's check in real quick. I'm Reed Connell. This is Corey Stockton holding it down for us. Corey, what's up, man? How I'm you doing? Holding it down, man. Yeah, episode five was absolutely one of my favorites, if not my favorite so far. Um, like you said, crazy challenge, right? Yeah, really, really a lot, a lot of fun challenge. Um, I've, I've had a chance to paddleboard that river as well, so I, I got to see maybe a tamer taste of, of what of what these guys <laughs> did. Yeah, we had a beautiful day out there when, when we were uh, filming, for sure. So beautiful day on Lake Austin and everything like that. The fun episode. Yeah, great, great match, great jujitsu, I and mean, really like two athletes with great stories that we finally got a chance to hear. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. And then, as always, in the back, man in the chat, man holding it all down, really, is Connor Joshin back there. What's up, Connor? What are, you, what are you up to lately? Man, I'm chilling. I'm, you know, trying to get back into training. I've been a lazy body, so just like everyone else in the world, I got that, like, two-week flab not being able to get back in there training. But it's been fun. Episode 5 was awesome. We already got people in the chat asking questions, which I'm going to save for a later time in the show. So... My man Nicholas Oberholzer, Oberholzer, I, I butchered that. I'm sorry, but uh, he's in the chat. He had a few questions. If you want to see your questions answered, you got to stay to the end, Nicholas, because we got some cool guests coming on, and I don't want to take up any more of your time. Uh, Reed, nice work on the episode, man. Also, Corey had a question. When you were at the lake and you were paddleboarding, did Andrew Tackett? Also, try and drown you. Was, that, was Andrew Tackett just there, just drowning people? Mm -hmm. Swimming, chasing yeah. <laughs> the whole time. You said you had like a similar experience. It's like, wow, man, your your lake trips must be intense. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Okay, so maybe kind of you want to you want to intro the the guest. I know it's one of one of your favorite. Um, oh man. Uh, Guys from the show, obviously a huge breakout star fr from the show. You know him well <laughs> mm -hmm. from episode one and, mm -hmm. and beyond. This guy is, uh, you know, uh, we didn't know quite what to expect bringing him on the show, but man, were we glad we did. Uh, one of our favorites here, uh, you know, internally in the office and everything like that, but but is becoming a huge star, I think. Uh, you want to say anything else about this guy, Connor? Yeah, man, he's the master disguise. We've seen him as John Donahue. <laughs> We've seen him as Michael Sears. He's uh, everyone's favorite, the one, the only, Scratch himself, Sewer Rat. How you wow. doing, Sewer Rat? Wow. Scratch, scratch, scratch. They Hell thought yeah. they put me in a body bag, but they still didn't zip it, baby. <laughs> Sewer Rat's <laughs> back. <laughs> Killing it. I love it. With the fame from the new from the show. He's gotten a haircut. He's gotten the, the a new oh, nose man. job. He got the got the uh the mustache looking slick, Spencer. How you doing, man? Good man. Like you said, growing the whiskers. I got a nose for every occasion. I hang it onto my bathroom mirror like my bling dude. I just choose whichever one I decide <laughs> goes with my outfit when I'm going out, depending what I'm doing, how I'm feeling. It's I a love whole, it, dude. Uh, I love it. So tell me, tell me a little bit, Spencer. You know, uh, these last five, five or six weeks here, we've been premiering the show. What's your reaction? What, what did you think? Uh, what have you been thinking about the show? What, what's, what's uh, yeah, just, just kind of right off the bat. What do you think about who's next? How, how's the ride been, man? Who's next? You mean sewer rat and friends? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great, dude. I love it. I didn't really get to stay in the house uh, with all the guys, so it's awesome to be able to watch their backstories and watching them interact. It really, uh, 
it fills a, a piece of that story for me that I didn't really get to be a part of while they were all in the house and clowning around. And of course, they told me about it, but to be able to watch that come alive on screen is uh, really amazing. And y'all did a great job of telling the story of those fighters and being in the house together is yeah, awesome maybe, to watch. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about how you ended up sticking around on the show. Because of course, <laughs> you know, episode one <laughs> happened, and and you know, we kind of dropped the bomb on everybody that eight people were winning and eight people were going home. Uh, maybe. Was that a surprise to to you that that part of it? And then, um, yeah, kind of what, what happened after after your match? How, how did you end up sticking around? Yeah, that was huge. Uh, we all got there, and y'all, you know, like y'all said, dropped that bomb that eight of us was going home. Was like prepared to stay for two weeks just in case. And uh, I was trying to figure out how they was going to have a show with just you know half those people staying on, and uh, it it just got to be a whole chain chain reaction so to speak and um just the lord the sewer rat the ceo of flow was telling people about like all my <laughs> videos that i had made about the ouchie waza as soon as i showed up everybody's all saying my catchphrases they wanted pictures everybody's doing the pose <laughs> and uh it was fun so i, I kind of had i felt like i was being really supported just from the start and when i came out for my match everybody's chanting sewer rat sewer rat <laughs> sewer rat let's go and, you're hyped uh, up you know i was just feeling the hype feeding off the energy in the room i came out i hit a sweet me so sorry 10 seconds into the group uh you know mike went flying he started screaming oh shit like didn't know what was going on craig was eating it up he was laughing his ass off from the sidelines and uh yeah he, just, <laughs> he called me over after the match promoted me gave me my brown belt and i know they they cut that part but they they alluded to it and uh he just did a lot to keep me around on the show like i said everybody was super supportive he picked me up we go get breakfast we were chilling on days uh chilling with craig jones in the ford or honda core baby uh <laughs> i met him back at legion and we was kicking it for a minute and uh i was talking to him about it he said he remembered me and uh, just asked me to stay on as, as part of the show. And we got to do a lot of fun shticks together. And, you know, coming in as John Danner, all my idea, by the way, 100% sewer rat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I came in, we did that. And then Hollywood Mike the next day. And uh, we just all had a lot of fun making everything happen together. Cool, you got some... Yeah, man, you, you've proven yourself to be kind of a, a master of disguise, right? You, uh, <laughs> you, you came in as John Donahoe one day, you came in as, as Mike Sears in the last episode. Um, is, is that something that you, like, you seem to have like a kind of knack for impersonation? That's something you've been, you've been and, working on? And we've got some, uh, some, some, good, some good sewer rat stuff planned for episode Roll six. Beautiful make, bean footage, baby. <laughs> <laughs> make sure you, if you guys are big sewer rat fans, make sure you got, stick around for episode six. We've got a good surprise for you there too. But yeah, master Whoa. of disguise. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, th th tell me about you know, your, your knack for impersonation, let's, let's call it that. Yeah, it's not just impersonation. I'm a wonderful actor. I hear talk. Mike <laughs> Rackshawn thinks I actually went out, which wasn't true at all. I was just playing possum. <laughs> <laughs> so I should have won an Emmy and award for that performance. I really sold that. Made him believe I, I went out, which was, uh, I was just trying to get him to let go, which he did within the rules of the match. I didn't tap. So we should have reset that match from standing. Yeah, it's still no. my belief. And you, you uh, definitely... still beefing with the referee for resetting it back. In that <laughs> we didn't, we didn't like, think of everything. It's true. Like... It's true. You made us yeah, have to that, kind of rethink some things. That is a very technical reading of the rules there. Hey, no one leaves uh, until there's a tap. What if you go what out? I'm saying. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Oh. But uh, I don't know. It's just it's something uh, kind of like my personality. But then, of course, like I was saying, just feeding off everybody in the room, it allows them to have a little bit more positive of an experience that they don't take things as seriously. And what's been really awesome is um, because I get a lot of content just from my fans. You know, a lot of these people have been hitting me up. They made um, like fan art over me. A lot of those catchphrases come from people when we're, we're just chatting and they say, Oh dude, just like this, this, this. And I'd be like, yeah. And then, and that'll be another catchphrase. So it just, it's a whole world building element. People love to just be a part of the sewer verse as it's known now <laughs> and i've got a whole sewer rat nation watching this and uh tell them scratch scratch don't stop scratching and chew your core baby 
<laughs> legend, legend. Connor, you wanted to t- talk to, to uh, Surat? I know you've been looking forward to this one. Yeah, Surat. I had a first question. Uh, do you know when that ADCC invite is coming? Do you uh, Are you expecting Mo to cool. reach out to you, or have you reached out to Mo? What's the game plan there? I think I'm going to be a surprise guest, maybe commentator or color commentary, and uh, maybe we'll do me and Keenan super fight pro wrestling. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, uh, second question. How do we get you back on for season two? How do we infiltrate you? Can you just like live in the attic for season two Let's and show up like baby. midway yeah. through episode I'll four or something? <laughs> Start crawling out of walls. closets, uh-huh. surprising people, probably <laughs> yeah. sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I we was... We think of something fun. <laughs> I, I was curious. Uh, you know, I, I've seen you going back and forth with, with some of the contestants. Uh, who are some of the friendships that you made that, you know, have, have stuck around and what are some of the rivalries that seem to uh, continue to permeate the uh, social media scape? Everybody, man. I mean, we're still all in a group chat together. The house, everybody who stayed, and even the contestants that went home, we have a group chat and we all stay super close. Of course, my roommate, Renee Buggy Choke in the world, coming up, he calls, texts me almost every day, chatting me, beat Bomgia, telling me about his coffee. I got some of that. It's really good. And, um, yeah, who is it? Um, I'm blanking on the names. Andy Varela, you mm-hmm. know, because we were all hanging out before all, all the big events were going on. I like Big Dan. Dan, Big Dan's a good, a good dude. You know, he's just uh, a you, little. You got a bad a rap so- on the on the show. What do you think of, of Big Dan on the show? Um, you know, it wasn't really him personally getting a bad rap. You know, of course, I didn't like that he was snapping at the camera people because I mean that's what we're there for. But uh, I think he could have gone about his match choices a little bit better maybe picked his match instead of two people that he wanted to see fight like he should have stepped up and chosen his match to go next and given his teammate a break adam bradley uh and then of course everybody was clowning him about that the rest of the season but i think in a way he somewhat did get a bad rap because he really is a genuine and and nice person and uh, i agree you know he, he, he he came hug me we had a heart to heart and i like big dan yeah, he's a good dude. He's a good dude. I think actually we, we can play a little bit of uh, of of um, Sue Rat's first match there against Mike Rackshen. And yeah, uh, Spencer, I'm not sure if you can see this, to be honest, but maybe you could talk us through a little bit of, of that first match. Okay, let me see. I'll tune into the YouTube too and see if I can watch it there. Or maybe Let's you can go. just t- tell us kind of what you remember. We'll play play the, the highlights, and you can tell us kind of what you remember. So right out the yeah. gate, it was just the plan. You hit him with this with the miso sorry. Was that what you were looking for <laughs> right out the gate? I was looking for anything he was going to give me. I was trying to fly and scissor. I was going to roll a knee bar, something fancy, flashy. I go for big money moves, baby. They don't always <laughs> pan out, but I'm trying to have an exciting fight. I like to do fun things, whether they always work out or not. Is uh. You know, something to be said for practice and just mat time. And uh, I like to come out and try to hit these moves that I'm doing in practice all the time, prove it to myself, my teammates that I'm training with, and the students that I I, I get to coach up as well, that these moves, they, they work, they're fun, they're exciting, and uh, just putting on a show, baby. Hell yeah. Make Hell yeah. And, and, it, and it seemed like, you know, I remember when we were there and when you guys first all got to the hotel, you and Mike were, were good buddies, maybe like two of the best buddies in, in you know, the show. I didn't realize that you guys were knew each other. But then right. it seemed like by the time we were done filming the show, you and Mike <laughs> were kind of polar opposites <laughs> and really didn't like each other. Has that been, that fence been mended? Is that is that true or, or not? How is your relationship these days with with, uh, with Mike Rakshan, the Sultan of Strangles? Uh, we, we're on friendly terms. We come from same lineage. We have the same uh, signature move. Uh, he likes to, <laughs> to do, do a move signature to mine, so of course I can't turn away a fellow sewer rat. And of course, sewer rats will always be scratching. There's no stopping that. It's just true, uh, true. a friendly, I would say, brother rivalry that, you know, I, I look up to him. I respect what he's doing. I like that he's got his character and he goes for these signature moves as well. That's what I feel like maybe some of the jujitsu was missing that you guys did a really great job of providing on the show is these uh, fighters that have moves that they're working for. And it's almost like WWE in a way we're looking for these signature submissions that we like to hit off. And it's always like a big payout when we can get in these positions. I had Mike in the uh, trash compactor set up, but he's just so barrel bodied. I couldn't fit around him and he just <laughs> rolled me over like Donkey Kong. Yeah. But uh, you know, he's been training a lot, a lot, a lot. And he trains with high level guys. So of course 
his, his training, his mat time paid off for him. I'm very happy for him. And, uh, I have no ill will against him, but I'm going to scratch him up next time I see him. <laughs> Are you uh, you, you back to, to training and everything, uh, Spencer? You training out there in Louisiana? Oh, yeah, yeah. Me over at Ronin Martial Arts, and I'm I'm perfecting a secret move I learned in Japan. A new one. Uh-oh. So I will have to have a chance to debut this this new sewer sewerverse technique. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll I've look already said to too much. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that. Um, Connor, is anybody in in the, in the YouTube or, or anything like that, or or you have any um, more questions for for Spencer for for Sewer Rat here? Yeah, there, Starts there, the show right, right there. Now. There was a question about uh, your time at Legion. I know it ended up leaving leading to a music video. So I think I think uh, I would like yeah. to talk about a what what led to that just a little bit you can be very brief go through the music video and then tell us a little bit about there's a secret youtube video a music video i think i was sent a link for secret we're talking about secret videos a secret video it was a music underground, video underground in the tunnels the new one the mm-hmm. pre pre release that Yo, only the what sewer is, nations got a hold of what is that what 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 did i watch and why is there a very famous person the edited sewer in rat chilling with the riff raff baby <laughs> Oh my go God. way back. What are we way talking back. about I'm here, Sir? Explain. Yeah, I sent one to Mike Sears. You didn't share it around. <laughs> oh my God! I got you, Nico. Yeah, we yeah we got the link, I guess. But okay. uh, <laughs> can you give us the rundown of of uh, what what we're talking about here, Sir? You you obviously everyone knows you're very well known across the the United States for your uh, Christmas oh music. Uh, for your rap against Keenan, uh, but recently we got a private link sent to us of a secret <laughs> music video with you in uh, Riff Raff, well known. Is he from Louisiana? I don't know. I'm assuming he, sound, he seems not. like a <laughs> no. he seems like a Louisiana guy. He does. <laughs> so give us give us the Let's rundown. Give us the rundown, Spencer. You've been rapping more lately. You've been getting more in, into into that world as well. I've been getting a little into it. Um, I got a new career, which has been taking a lot of my time. And um, just when you you come home from the day, your creative energy is kind of super spent. So I've been trying to have some of that reset time where I can get those creative juices flowing again. But how it met up with Riff Raff is uh, he's been one of my favorite artists for a long, long time since he was dropping in Vines and all those music videos on YouTube. When I was out at Legion, that's actually kind of where I met up with him. I had seen him in New Orleans a few times. But he had a show, um, and I went to go uh, like give him my mixtape, and we were just kind of chatting back and forth. I didn't have the money at the time to get a full feature from him, but I was like, "Hey, man, next time I see you, whether it's here or you know in New Orleans, let's link up, let's get on a feature together." And uh, rest is history. <laughs> Wait, so this isn't this isn't riff raff edited into your music video. This is a real. Oh. Yes, yeah, me and riff raff. <laughs> Legend. So we're playing a little bit of it here, Spencer, if that's all right. <laughs> yeah. This, this is a little bit of a sneak peek. So how do people listen to this if they want to listen to it? Uh, well, I didn't do the official re-release yet. This was just for the Sewer Rat Nation, but I guess we can give it to the whole dang nation. <laughs> <laughs> we're sorry if we ruined it for you, Sewer Rat. But we just give them a little taste. A little, little, little tease, a little, little tip of the yeah. tongue. Build the hype. Mm-hmm. That's what I like. <laughs> I love it, dude. I think we're, we also got Renee coming on here after you to talk about, oh. um, you know, the episode that he was in and everything like that. What did you think of Renee's performance on episode five here? And and um, yeah, I love Renee, man. They were scared of the buggy choke. They tried to do everything they could to neutralize him, and uh, you know, they went out. They fought their hardest. Renee did his thing. I love how he's been coming across on the show. It's weird because Jansen talked more in person than I get to see him <laughs> on the show. Um, but after that, you know, they fought it out. And then we went back to the house and we cooked steaks and we all ate. It was great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What a time you guys all had. It seemed like a lot of camaraderie uh, going on in there. Anything you wanted to, to say or any questions you had for, for Renee that we could ask him or anything you wanted us to, uh, to follow up with, with Renee about? <laughs> just uh, make sure he's chewing his corn and uh, just want to let the whole sewer rat and the whole other nation know 
Sewer Rat merchandise is going out this week. If they want a chance to grab some scratch guards or some uh, mm-hmm. scratch pants, I got a link in my bio, official Sewer Rat Instagram, baby. Heck yeah. Every one of those scratch cards for sure. Yeah, definitely. And the if they want to listen to your, color. <laughs> and if they want to listen to your music. I have a Spotify. Um, some of the links are in my Instagram as well, but they could always uh, just message me. I send it to them. It's uh, SoundCloud slash 504 Sewer. <laughs> okay, there you go. Hell yeah. Connor, any any last uh, words for, for Sue Rat from the chat or any, anybody in, interested in what's what's going on in Sue Rat's life? I mean, many different avenues we could go down. <laughs> there is there is quite a few avenues. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of tunnels in that uh, in that sewer. Yeah, yeah it's I, the whole sewer system, baby. <laughs> one of my favorite one of my favorite stories I remember is that one one day Andrew Tackett, I remember told me that it was like he like woke up in the middle of the night and he heard these noises coming from the living room. <laughs> <laughs> and he went and he went out to go see what was going on in the living room woke him up in the middle of the night and you were playing um just sewer sounds from on, on, <laughs> on the tv and you, were, you were sleeping on the couch i think yeah and there was just it, and you had like the tv just like jacked up super like loud sewer and it was sounds? just like drips and pipes and just kind of like <laughs> sewer ambience is that it yeah it was one of the nights i got to stay in the house and yeah i was on the couch and in between the couch and the floor i was thinking about making a nest but i didn't have any blankets um but i, I was having a hard time going to sleep so i tried to, to put on something that would soothe me remind me of home so i changed the youtube on the tv over to 10 hours of sewer sound and i was, I was like a baby i was out like a light <laughs> yeah they woke nice. up and they're like dude what are you what is going on like, what is this music didn't isaac like, sleep in the couch isaac <laughs> ended up switching beds with with jansen ulti- uh, ultimately and okay. so he slept in the room with mike rakshan okay it was, man so no one was in the living room while you decided to put on ambient music i had to get to sleep Um, i understand (laughs) just making sure making sure yes sir well y'all don't stop scratching thanks for having me on merry christmas thanks spencer appreciate it brother sewer rat there he is all the way from louisiana who's next one of the one of the stars from who's next of course he had a great match with mike rakshan on on matt uh on episode one and uh you know gets into all sorts of antics throughout the show like i said uh you haven't seen the last of Sewer Rat, so uh, so episode six. Make sure you guys tune in for that. Uh, Going to be a lot of fun. But uh, thanks for Spencer for for, for tuning in f- for coming on. Appreciate it, Spencer. And uh, we'll, we will see him later. But uh, what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, there's a reason he's a fan favorite, right? Yeah, he's uh, one of a kind. I do also remember there was a time where we where when we first got to that to the hotel. And, and Spencer was just knocking on doors, <laughs> just like all throughout the hotel. And people were just coming out of their, ho- their hotel room and being like, what the heck's going on? And I'd be like, oh, sorry, wrong room. <laughs> but then it was just like literally everybody in the hotel. <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually got some of Sewer Rat scratch shorts coming. Oh, I ordered the yeah. gold ones, and we'll see. They're supposed to be coming out this week. So, yeah. I also, him coming to the airport was another time where he just disrupted Austin in a, in a major way, right? Yeah, there's some good there's some good sewer rat stories from from the first season filming for sure. I think everybody had a, had interesting interactions with him. We were finding filming. We were finding sewer rat stickers all out through the office and the bathrooms and the boys' bathroom. <laughs> they were just fucking like everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's sewer rat stickers everywhere, mm-hmm. all over the office and mm-hmm. everything. <laughs> yeah. It really made his impact. I think uh, all of like the non jujitsu people, because Flow Sports is you know, big company, obviously. All the non jujitsu people really digged it, and that's when we kind of knew we're like, oh, Suarez, he's doing something here. He's doing something here. We can keep chatting. Is, is Renee ready? We keep chatting, or we got Renee Souza coming on, of course, uh, from episode five. Uh, we've had it, Renee on earlier uh in in the season we talked to him after episode one but thought it'd be good to get get renee back on here um he had a you know big part of course of episode five one half of, of episode five is him versus jansen gomez the number one pick jansen fr- from red team um and i genuinely think it's one of the best matches if not the best match fr- from from the series yeah to be it, honest it, it, it's an incredible match and you can you know going in knowing both both those guys from the previous episodes you kind of get an idea of what their strategies are going to be right and watching how those strategies play out and it becomes kind of a battle of, of just grit and heart and tenacity it gets a little chippy at points it's real real fun to watch 
Yeah, yeah. So I think we got Renee here. Renee Sue's all the way from the East Coast. One of our favorites to have on the show. Buggy choking the world out there, of course. We got Renee Souza. What's up, Renee? Welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on, man. What's up, guys? How are you guys doing? How's everything? Bon dia, Renee. Bon dia. Boa tarde, right? Bon dia, (laughs) boa tarde. (laughs) Heck yeah, man. We're doing good. Just talking about the show. Obviously, just dropped episode five. You gotten a chance to see to see episode five, Renee? Dude, I mean, you know, we've been hitting refresh on flow more than Instagram, you know, like this whole time. So, uh, yeah, man, I was, you know, like everyone's been asking me, yo, how do you get the link a day early? I'm like, dude, read stuff and follow directions. Like if you go on the website, it literally says you'll get it a day before. Like we're in our group chat with, with uh, Mike Rack and he's like, where are you? Get- Who's your plug at flow to get these links a day early? Like, dude, just follow directions, you know? Um, but no, I watched it twice last night um, and then twice today. Um, and then I haven't gotten a chance to rewatch my match because that's what, man, you know, that's the that's the thing that's been like in my head for the past like six months, like what I could have done better. Um, but man, I, I, I texted Reed like first thing in the morning. I said, thank you so much just because it looked great, you know, and I didn't know what you guys are going to show about me. So I'm happy I came out in like a good kind of way. <laughs> I didn't know what uh, was going to be shown. So it was super excited. And uh, Jansen is the man too. So it was super cool to see his story and, and that kind of stuff too, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, you, so what you do kind of some, some, some uh, viewing parties. Is that, is, that, is that what you're doing or, or are you watching it by yourself? Yeah, what, like, how- I mean, it came out midway through the day yesterday and uh, yesterday was the second to last day of school for me. Um, so I was like in my classroom with a whole class of kids and just watching like, and trying to like be quiet and stuff. Um, but uh, then last night I just watched it with my mom. And then today I watched it with uh, some of my coworkers at school and stuff. Cause today was my last day of work um, full-time jujitsu now, you know? So um yeah just uh it was cool to like last day and got to show them that and stuff like that so it was cool so had, had any of your uh your students like seen seen this previously seen any of your any of your jiu-jitsu or, or the first couple episodes yeah they they'd following? seen some of my jiu-jitsu but i get i guess they get to see some of my like lifestyle kind of stuff on it so they're like dude mr this is so, so chill <laughs> I'm like that's me you know like <laughs> um but uh yeah i'm kind of i'm i don't know right i've told you guys that maybe the public doesn't know like who's next like showed me that uh i can be in the top top of the of the ranks of the world you know so um now like i'm just focused on being my best jiu-jitsu competitor and teaching and traveling and you know buggy choke the world seminar tour is super real so sign up now you know like literally put up one post the other day booked like five seminars so it's working out well and you know things are things are good over here for sure can you can you please introduce us to our friend here? I think he's been Aww. going too long without calling. So him this out. is Milo Milo Machado. Say hi, Milo. Say hi, Milo. 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 Because of John Jock, obviously, uh, you know. Of course. Um, yeah. And he got and before I named him, I got John Jock's blessing. So obviously, he's going to be a stud um, <laughs> animal already. Already can you know like invert and. Mm-hmm. He isn't full he's like only eight weeks so he's not fully he can't uppercut right to the buggy but uh he can he can get his guard back you know? yeah. so yeah. as long He'll as he there. uses it I to get his guard that. back I'm, I'm happy i'm happy but long term you know <laughs> i like how when jiu-jitsu people get dogs they like tr- they genuinely teach them jiu-jitsu like that's awesome <laughs> yeah <laughs> Th- thor's cat's name is uh paulo meow <laughs> <laughs> that's right pa- pa- and pa- thor like just Thor messes with him so much. It's so funny. It's like, uh, it's, yeah. I, I mean, it's just stuff that you, you feel normally, you know? So, um, he definitely is gonna, I, I put him on his back and he doesn't like it, you know? And I just like pra- help him practice like inverting. Like any white belt. Stuff though, like that. You know, anybody white yeah, belt exactly, that comes in exactly. wants to He's be like, why tap. am I doing, like, why am I doing this? You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he's doing good. But, uh, yeah, I mean, dude, the paddle board, like this, this episode, a lot of people have been telling me this one's the best one. And, I mean, I'm not biased because it's me, but I just think like the stories, like it was just super interesting to show not only, you know, like the paddle boarding was like, honestly, the least stressful, like the chill is the most fun, you yeah, know? Yeah, I think we got a little and clip then, of the paddle board challenge too. We could just play okay, kind of while, while we yeah, talk definitely. about it. Um, 
But yeah, I like the paddleboard yeah. challenge because, like, man, the bullet challenge was so intense. You guys were like on edge, yeah. and then the gun challenge was so intense, and having Tim Tim there and, and just dealing with firearms is just an intense environment. And so, like, yeah. this was like the first challenge where I feel like everybody just like had genuine like fun across the board. No, actually, you're wrong. True, you're wrong, dude. True. When we walk out, and Mike goes. Oh, this is horrible. I'm like, Dude, what? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, how did you not think we're going to win? And then Big Dan and Adam are literally scared of the water. Like, <laughs> Dude, Adam, you live in San Diego. Learn how to swim, bro. You know? <laughs> and like, Big Dan is huge. Like, dude, you're going to sink if you don't learn how to swim. So figure it out, you know? Um, you may be but, able to touch uh, the no, bottom, these, honestly. These that, these clips that you're playing, like, dude, that was the most fun, you know? Like, you showed a little bit of me and me and Dan had gotten a straight up altercation. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> he, like, almost like threw me off my freaking board. Um, but yeah, that was that was the best, bro. It was so much fun. What did you What did you think about uh, Andrew and Isaac attacking Adam? Since Adam was the weakest link there, clearly. Dude, I was team blue team all day. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever we needed to win, I was down to do it. And those guys, you know, I can't, I can't say good enough things about those guys. Like they were ready to kill other people to win this challenge. <laughs> so, I mean, like obviously we had a, I did, I, did we have a lifeguard around? I don't know if we did. <laughs> but, <laughs> you guys um, had life vests. Yeah, we did. Somebody. Sewer rat, sewer rat was around. He was around. Yeah, he was around yeah. So, um. But uh, yeah, so that was so much fun, man. And then uh, you guys were doing interviews and me and Andrew got like 30 minutes of just like paddle boarding up the river and just chilling and stuff. So, and that was the day, that was the actual day before I think we competed. So it was a super good vibe. Um, Really was a highlight to me for sure. I, I actually had a question. Reed, how much thought did you put into the challenges and how concerned were you with a, with a participant death? Uh, man, we we put in a, a ton of of thought to the challenges for sure. Um, we had a you know we started with a lot more and we kind of had to whittle them down. Um, but I was not afraid that anybody was going to die. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> Why? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, I think yeah. Well, when the bull challenge happened, like it was one of those things where it was like it was a like, good idea on paper, and then when we, were, when we were out there, it was just like holy shit! I, mean, I can't believe we're really doing all this, you yeah. know. Um, but even in the moment, like the rodeo guys, like they, this is yeah. what they do, you know, like yeah, they, this is sure. a regular They're Friday not kill night us on for purpose. them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Sorry. They're not going to kill us on purpose, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when Andrew... At least we're paying them, right? For something. <laughs> <laughs> when Andrew Tackett was dragging Adam Bradley away from the board, were you worried then? Were you just, was there any point at the, at the paddleboard challenge where we worried Adam Bradley wasn't making it back, really. Because as soon as I was watching the episode, that's what I thought. I was like, oh, they're going to leave him out. <laughs> He's done for. <laughs> we we'll never see Adam Bradley again. <laughs> no, I, yeah. I had faith that we would somehow figure it out. Mm -hmm. we he was wearing, oh, wait, actually, out. let's talk about this. He was wearing a life jacket. So Andrew yeah. would literally have to hold him down for him to drown. There's it seemed no like he was willing to. Would you put that by Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, and, he's Andrew. Andrew's a, he's a Christian. He can't kill people, you know. True. True. <laughs> true. Very true. Andrew was uh, yeah, Andrew objective. was out there with you guys. Uh, maybe what last weekend or the weekend before that? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys had a, had a good time out there. He he showed out on uh, the Zach Edward Memorial. You want to tell us about that? Yeah. So um, it was just cool to like you know I helped run the finishers sub only, and uh, we just recently signed a deal with Flow, so we wanted to get some bigger names, and I hit up Andrew because you know we just made that connection. And I said, I was like, dude, come do a seminar, come teach some passing, and uh, then come fight for the title and uh, against a really game opponent, you know? So didn't know if he was going to come in, like didn't know how it was going to work. Um, he had a lot of good other super fights, two other buggy chokes in on that day. Um, so I'm hyped, you know? And then Andrew's the final match and uh, just straight up dominates this guy. Like, I don't know what, the, I don't know what his mental stuff is, but he kills it. Like he's so on top of like how to attack and how to stay calm like the guy was going for some flying guillotines and not even one time did andrew even flinch one time you know he just used it to pass used the use it to put on pressure um and then just like in his match with fabian he had some trouble finding the neck when he got on the guy's back so he ended up restarting doing like a blast double to freaking cartwheel pass like super insane and then um with the pressure the guy like kind of went to his knees and Andrew found like an arm triangle and it was super sick. Um, he was, uh, he was, he's just 
he's just how he like how he wasn't the show, like he wasn't anybody can say like that's that's him every day like he lives mm, his life mm. at a hundred percent um <laughs> and then literally he proceeded to we proceeded to do that we went to my family's food truck got a bunch of food came home showered and it's maybe like 11 o'clock at night and we're going for a sunrise hike at the delaware water gap the next day and um my sister's boyfriend is over and she's like he doesn't do jiu-jitsu but he's like talking to andrew and he's like i think i could take you down i'm like dude wrong person <laughs> like in, in a respectful way we're just talking about jiu-jitsu yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff and um we have good wrestling out here he's like i think i could take you down i was like all right uh, we got mats let's go <laughs> so oh, no. we went downstairs in my basement i called one of my local blue belts to come by because he's a good wrestler too and myself Andrew took us down probably 25 times in a row. Like could not take him down in like a 20 by 20 space, concrete walls, you know, <laughs> he's insane. 11 and then, uh, yeah. Andrew's ready to go. <laughs> it doesn't matter dude, never turns down a challenge. And then, yeah, dude, we killed a like eight mile sunrise hike. Like got to the top of the mountain. Like, but he told wow. me, he's like, dude, I've never gone on a hike. I was like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? And he's like, we don't have mountains in Texas. I'm like, Oh, that's crazy. Um, I was like, we got a mountain here. So this is like the Delaware water gap straight up, like right where George Washington, like cross the Delaware. There's like a big, like left turn. It's super sick. If you guys ever come up, I'll show you guys. Um, but we did it like in maybe like 35 minutes, like maybe like two, three miles to the top, like just sprinted it. And obviously he's leading and I'm like, dude, <laughs> you're an animal. <laughs> you know, like let's slow down. But we got to the top, got to see a sick sunrise. And then, uh, he has some privates and then I dropped them off. And then he's actually coming back this weekend for the Emerald city invitational. Um, they're doing like a 170 man bracket, pretty stacked. So, uh, I won't, I won't be in, I won't be at that one, but, uh, um, he'll be back around. So it's cool. It's cool to keep in those connections and stuff like that. Like, uh, Isaac competes this weekend, right at, um, Asia Oceania trial. So I'm looking forward to seeing him mop up some people. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we're all sick. There are like ten thousand hiking trails in Austin. Andrew, <laughs> Andrew's got to get, get, get in there. There are so many hiking trails in Austin. Like it's crazy. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. But I was like, I, I'm not from Austin. I can't say anything. So it's I was like, like the, I, I, all I know is that there are like the Appalachian Trail goes right by my house. You know, so like that's like a sick. Yeah, road. I'm sure that those um, are probably sicker trails for sure. But there are yeah, trails. Yeah. And Andrew's too busy uh, spending his weekends riding bulls and yeah. shooting guns <laughs> yeah. and going paddle boarding and preparing. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Connor, yeah. you gonna say something? You got something you wanted to ask for now? Uh, we did have a question, and maybe it's good for the next video clip. It looks like we have lined up, um, but I I, I don't want to get too much into it because it's about the end of the match. It's about. Uh, after the match when Spoiler Tim alert. Spriggs mm -hmm, when Tim Spriggs had something to say. So maybe we just line this up as a good way for uh, Renee to start telling us what he thought about uh, facing yeah. off with Jansen. Yeah, well, let me, I can ask, like, I think this is one of the, a great match. Obviously, Renee, you're known for the buggy choke, and I think this, this match really played out in a inter really interesting way. We knew your strategy, and we knew Jansen's strategy, and they kind of, you know, didn't, didn't uh, you know, they were incongruent at some times, but but I feel like both of you guys had really clear objectives, and we got to see it play out like that. What did, what did you think of the match? How, how did you remember it, and what was it like watching it back? Um, yeah, so in watching it back, right, maybe I'm a second late, but that first, like, dude, I hate to talk shit, but I feel like my first, our first 45 seconds had more action than some entire matches, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, I don't know, like, uh, obviously I did have my game plan, you know, um, but when I'm like deep in that flow, I'm kind of just going to feel what I feel is there and I'm going to like kind of go with that. So you hear me tell Craig like that he's really strong, you know, um, and what, and what I think back to that, like my game plan should have been like in when I feel somebody being super strong instead of going through the wall, I think about going like around the wall. And I shouldn't have done that. I think I should have kept going forward and kept attacking. Um, but I don't know. The way I attack is not to like sort of attack, you know, it's to kill. So like every attack exhausts a lot of energy, you know. Um, so I think that's where like I just I don't know. I guess I thought I could tap him a little bit sooner. Um, but maybe I should have adjusted it to like more movements to create him losing energy, you know. Um, but like right here at the eight minute mark, I, it honestly felt like two minutes. It felt like, I mean, it was probably like a hundred scrambles in already, but, uh, we were doing a lot of, a lot of 
switching top bottom. He wasn't really letting me get on top really that much. Um, he was doing a really good job at keeping his knee line aware. Um, and obviously I wanted the freaking buggy choke the whole time, but, uh, I knew, I, so I wasn't like totally giving it to him, you know? Um, but it's just crazy to rewatch it. Cause in that moment, you know, like I'm like bawling my eyes out, like staring at Reed. I'm like, dude, the one dub I have from this is at least dudes are scared to sit in side control. Like, that's <laughs> like, I was like sitting on the stairs, like just reflecting on, you know? Um, but I mean, I don't know. I'm happy that I got to display my guard. I'm happy I got to display my leg attacks. Obviously there's room for growth in both of them, but, um, I don't know, man, I'm proud. I'm super proud of my performance. And, uh, you knew, I mean, you guys are there, man. I left it out there, you know, like, so oh, this yeah. arm bar, you know, like not, not taking any away from Jansen, but nothing put a sweat on me. Not like not one thing, you know, not one thing he did like stressed me out, you know, um, even his, pre even right here, like pressure, cool. Boom, boom. It's like, even these Kimuras at first, you know, I can't wait to rewatch the whole match because I'm pretty sure it's not two Kimuras I got. Out of. I'm pretty sure it's like 35. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I'm looking forward to see how I can not make that an escape and make that a reattack a little bit better. Um, and uh, it's crazy to see like exactly what Craig was telling me to be aware of is what caught me in the end. Um, but man, I don't know. You guys, uh, you guys said it was great too. And I I'm super happy with it. So Overall, it was just I such an a couple action, things, but like like you said, man, it was just like from the get go, the two of the the nicest dudes in the house, and it gets a little you you know like you guys both want it, which is awesome to see. Um, and then, well, we want to do jujitsu, right? Let's say yeah, that we want yeah. to do. We wait. We came to a jujitsu reality show to do jujitsu, yeah. right? Not that, to talk on the freaking camera. <laughs> is that pointed at someone in particular? I, I'm not sure. Uh, Tim Spriggs, you know, mm. as a whole. Like, how can you be a leader? In, oh, man, I don't even want to get into it. <laughs> it's just, just so annoying because it's just like, dude, what are you even talking about? You know, like, like, he's just fake, you know? I just hate that, you know? It's just annoying. We did have a question. What was running through your head whenever, um, you know, you just come off of a really tough loss, obviously, and then, um, mm -hmm. you know, Tim begins. Uh, yeah, it's a great question. And I just wanted to yeah, preface it to that. Ask Reed because Reed had to get <laughs> – Reed had to tell me not to get up because that was about it. <laughs> but I, I, there was a, a point where we showed the episode and some people were kind of like mad at us they were like man we just invested everything into renee yeah. and jansen why are you injecting tim into the into the end of the match like we we care so much about renee and jansen i want to see them get their hand raised and then 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 get into the story like why are we inject why do we have tim here and it's just like well that's how yeah. it happened that's genuinely yeah. how how it happened. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. before Hollywood you guys Mike were able literally gave me a water bottle that I took a sip of and then I shared it with Jansen. Just telling you guys how like as soon as the match is done, we're best friends again. <laughs> but then literally like first thing I asked Hollywood Mike, I was like, Can I throw water at him? And then like I looked at <laughs> Hollywood Mike and I was like, I was about to go up to Tim and like even though he held me down and now, like that one time, like, dude, I'm sure I could tap him out. Like, so like Dude, like he was being so, and I'm not even, and maybe if somebody hears me out of context, this sounds kind of egotistical. You know why it's not egotistical? Because it's the foundations of what jiu-jitsu is built on, which is like self-defense, you know, like defending, standing up for somebody who can't stand up for themselves. Like not saying Jansen couldn't stand up for himself, but he wasn't going to freaking say anything, you know, and Tim blowing up like that, literally only talking about himself, only talking about himself, like what like he took that whole moment from jansen like you guys were in the room like you literally didn't know what was happening in our match like it was happening so fast and we were just scrapping we we're on our feet and we're doing this and you know like and then at the end tim like doesn't think of like holding his his students hands up or his team and being like he wants to point at himself and be like oh i'm better than craig and it's just like dude everyone that has seen everyone that has seen that that knows nothing about jiu-jitsu already knows Tim's a bad guy. I'm like, dude, yeah, he is. Like, and, and I tell them that he's not good at jiu-jitsu either. Like, okay, he, he did well at the Who's Number One Championship. Shout out to you, Tim. Good good job. But, dude, are you a champ? I'll face anybody at any time. Okay, then just face Craig. Like, when we were sitting there at B-Team and he was, like, getting in Craig's face and he said some shit to Isaac, I was like, dude, 
all of these guys will take your head off. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just, that was the thing that irritated me, you know? Okay, camera's off, all good vibes, chill. Camera's on, that ego turned on, you know? So that makes me sad. That makes me sad because that's not what I want kids in the sport to look up to. Um, and yeah, like you just said, like they took that moment from Jansen and like, dude, I was, I mean, I've never been in a fist fight, but I was ready to get after him, man. Uh, that was so, it was just so annoying because it was like, dude, we just worked so hard. Like I literally worked my whole life for this 30 minute moment. You know what I'm saying? So did Jansen, all the things he overcame to, t- to Tim wanting to take that spotlight. So I'm happy you guys covered that because that shows his character. And, um, I'm sorry for getting a little heated about it, but, uh, it just, it pissed me off. Cause I was like, dude, I just worked for it. Like if I would have just tapped him with the muggy choke, he wouldn't have been saying that. Obviously he was just blowing up. Cause we took the first two wins and then they took the second two. But, um, yeah, man, uh, that was a big vibe kill for sure. If, if you, if you got to tap out Tim Spriggs, how you doing it? What's your go-to? You got to take out Tim Spriggs <laughs> next week. He's buggy choking him. <laughs> you buggy, <laughs> you buggy choking him? He knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. Mm. Um, probably arm drag back take rnc like he's not that good so i, I, I watch him at to ADCC, that it... like like he just he takes pressure sometimes and he just doesn't know how to handle it so um i think uh i think some hard hand fighting i i actually reed was there right i tapped out his one teammate um from lloyd urban uh maybe in less than like two minutes right in front of eddie great great if there's a crazier moment then who's next like that was in one <laughs> you know like last match of adcc trials Reed is right there. He's like, I'm hoping Renee's gonna do a buggy <laughs> choke. <laughs> like, I just done another buggy choke. And um, and yeah, I just surrendered to the flow, listened to Eddie and got a rear triangle. So I think uh yeah, I think I don't know if if maybe we want to set that up for uh who's number one in the future. I'll 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 fight for the heavyweight championship. I'll cut I'll cut the line, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> See if we can make that happen. All right, all right. <laughs> if and he you, accepts that contract, that's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was then it's like, okay, I'll too. fight uh, And then if he wins, I'll fight Isaac. And then if he wins, I'll fight Craig. It's like, dude, just you say you want to fight the best. There's zero argument, man. Like when he goes, he just got second at ADCC. Like, yeah, what have you gotten at ADCC? Like, dude, what? His arguments are so not structured well, you know? Like, it's absurd, man. Yeah, it doesn't quite work like that. You have to you have to win an ADCC medal. You can't just beat somebody and then claim their gold medal. <laughs> you got to win. Um, but yeah, man. What were you going to say, Corey? Oh, uh, Isaac signed up for the 99-kilogram division at uh, Asia Oceania I did see that. trials this weekend. Mm. Um, looking pretty healthy in that division, right? A division looking like it's likely going to go in his favor. Uh Tim is ADCC at the 99 kilogram division. Oh wow! So what we could see Isaac that, that first round match, dude. Isaac, all day. Give me, <laughs> give me your money to bet, bro. I, <laughs> watch, I watch episode six, guys. But I had to train. I hope the training footage doesn't come out um, <laughs> of me and Isaac, because dude, like, I love Craig, bro. Craig's super good. Dude, Isaac's the truth, bro. He's, you know, like Andrew is really good. Like, you know, I'm not blowing up people that aren't good, you know. Um, Kyle, I didn't get the train with him, but I know he's really good. Um, but two people that really grew in my eyes, like feeling it on the day-to-day, Andrew and Isaac, you know, those guys are going to be, I'd say, top five in the world by the end of the year for sure. How about Jansen? Are you guys, um, you know, obviously you guys had a war there. Are you able to, were you able to kind of, um, you know, be, be friends and keep in touch w- with Jansen? How do you feel about Jansen after the, after the fight? Oh man, dude, like, just like I just described, the match was over and, you know, I had a water bottle and the second idea wasn't for me to slug it. I just was like, dude, do you need this? You know, like, and, and we like, we're already on good vibes. So, um, uh, I don't know. Right. I think Reed was saying that there might be a seventh episode when the finale comes out. Maybe we can plan a like um, reunion, like get together at like the Red Rose or something like that. Just having a nice dinner together. Um, yeah. But uh, Jansen, like uh, Jansen, <laughs> Jansen. Um, yeah, man, we we had a great time later that night. Um, yeah. So I don't know if in episode seven you guys will cut out some some you know extended <laughs> stuff. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> was a great time then, and yeah, the rest of the time in the house and everything like. Uh, Man, I, I don't know. I, that's how I am. You know, it's business on the mat, but as soon as we step off the mat, like, it's all good. He didn't, I mean, obviously he was trying to break my arm, but 
I was trying to break everything of his too. So we were good. Um, and, uh, he, he hits me up as much as he talked to us in person, you know? So I, I hit him up and make sure he's good every now and then I said, congrats when he got double gold at worlds and got his black belt. So that made me feel good <laughs> right yeah. after I lost. Right. But, um, but yeah, dude, he's a man. I can't wait to go out to California and train with him and stuff like that. So, um, I'm really excited to, to see where he goes. Cause man, he's, He's so good, you know. Didn't he beat he beat what Herbert Santos a couple months ago or something? So I know yeah, he's just great. working hard and focused. So Man, he he was like this close to beating Gustavo Batista, who's a world champion. Or yeah. he even looked he looked at really good against Leandro at world. Yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah. Like, he I didn't see Almost that. took Gustavo's back there. Like, uh huh. Yeah, he was right there. But was that in the gi or what? That's in the gi. Yeah, yeah. That at sucks. World. Yeah. <laughs> oh wait you guys are talking about gi lost me <laughs> lost me no nah, i'm just i'm just out. kidding uh the the world was sick you guys killed it man you guys are doing i'm so happy to see you guys doing so well um i was actually training with like jt and fiona a couple of weeks ago so it was sick to see her go absolutely kill everybody yeah, huge one um, for her yeah that was awesome and then um yeah, I mean, it was just, it was the coolest world I've ever seen. So that's yeah, not a testament a to everybody's jiu-jitsu. I think that's a testament to how you guys are putting it into, into visuals, right? And uh, super, super, you guys are, you guys are amazing. Uh, it's just, so all the content that's coming out, like, shout out to Trey, shout out to, you know, Poderoso Mike, everybody. Everything's, everything's the man, you know? So cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I always appreciate it, Renee. Thanks for the support. Connor, you got, is there anything else going on back there in the YouTube? Anybody have any questions for uh, the buggy choke? Yeah, actually, we Wizard? had we had someone in the Discord, Cyborg, like Cy, like Psychic, right? Mm -hmm. Cyborg mm -hmm. said he just did an awesome private with Renee and uh, then jumped on with us. Oh, so uh, he says to tell you what's up, Renee. Uh, nice. I guess you just did a private with somebody. Um, Sick, cyborg. yeah. I, I just did a private with like, a, do you guys know Trinity Pun? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, she wanted to upgrade her buggy joke. So Hell had yeah. to get it. That's had to get it taken care of. You know. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I was like, like in the beginning, I was like, dude, you're gonna do this great. And then I just showed her a couple details, and that's the thing. Like, man, I'm not saying I came up with anything or anything. Um, I was just at the right time in the right place. You know, I I got straight up exposed when I went for it the first time, you know, I got double buggied. Like a lot of people don't hear that story, you know? And then, uh, and then this one on the shirt, it's actually, uh, Adam, right? So I'm shushing Ty Rotulo because he's coaching Adam at ADCC trials <laughs> through the defense. I'm like, I'm like, yo, like, come on, bro. Like, let me do this. Um, and, uh, so that's the story behind that. And that didn't work, but I used it to sweep to get to mount within head and arm. And then Gordon actually posted it out on his Instagram. And then, um, and then, yeah, that following Tuesday was, uh, the day I let my guard get passed and then a little shot yeah, off, man. shot off shotgun, you know what I'm saying? Right to the chest. So mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the buggy joke. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, w was it, was it like a weird experience fighting Jansen when, and like every time he would pass, he'd, he'd go straight to North. He like, he was, he was avoiding the buggy choke at all costs you heard him say he didn't want he just didn't want to be on the highlight tim would scream north south north south like was that a weird experience that was awesome reed that was yeah, no, awesome I hear Hell like, yeah. Hell it yeah. was awesome you know like obviously i wanted him to settle you know so i'm like oh no settle <laughs> <laughs> um but it's cool man like since then you know like uh if i would have been like oh that's it i'm letting go of the buggy choke or you know whatever like um, I think I would have not been able to like create a lot of like systems off of it, but you guys watched me at ACC trials, you know, the one guy like right after that, I got slammed, another guy got slammed and almost broke his neck. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy that that happened to me because I got to learn different other setups where you can keep them more contained and keep them coming into you rather than waiting for them to come to you. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I, I mean, I think I've sent it. Maybe maybe Reed's the only one that I haven't sent it to, but I've sent I know I've sent all the buggy choke secret instructional videos to you guys. So <laughs> um been working on it, you know, and uh, uh it's and trying to catch me in the better. buggy choke. He doesn't want he doesn't want to show He's me that the details. Mm -hmm. I got a question for you're, you. You're uh, just not active on Instagram, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if I know we're putting you I'll, on I'll send uh, it to you as soon as soon as it's over, I'll send it to you, okay? No, it's, way, it's, um, it's legit. Yeah. If, yeah. Renee, if we if we put you on uh the Mount Rushmore of buggy chokes, right? Who are the other three there? <laughs> mm. 
That's a great question. Yeah. yeah. Dude, well, I mean, the show's over now, you know, and um, I mean, Flo's doing all these vlogs. I mean, we should we should get a freaking buggy choke the world vlog, you know, I don't know, maybe a couple, maybe we're in Cali and then we come back to Pennsylvania or something. I don't know. Are you coming let, through let Texas? Me know what's in in Texas? Budget and I'll come out to Texas, dude. Hell yeah. I mean, you know, I'm, I mean, I might be coming out to Texas soon. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think we should be doing a buggy choke the world flow seminar just right yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Just the flow. Dude, guys. No. <laughs> dude say less. <laughs> say less. Um, but yeah, man, uh, like you got, like, I, I, I don't know, man, I, I've said this, I hope I haven't said this too much, but you guys are the best dude. Like you guys could have made this experience totally business and totally whatever. Like, um, I remember like after I triangled that guy, ADCC trials, like I like ran up to read, I was hoping you guys, I don't know if you have that content. Cause I know Dave was right behind you, but, uh, I like body locked read and like lifting him up in the air. And I was like, Dude, like you did that, you know. Oh, you're and, too um, nice, man. man. You're too nice, man. You did it all. No, but it's true though, you know. Like, man, like if we wouldn't have connected at that day in Oceanside before, I didn't even, I didn't even, like this is true. I didn't even send a video to get on to who's next. Like, I literally posted. Mike goes, dude, you got to apply, and I was like, all right, whatever, because you guys didn't tell us what at all this was gonna be. I just posted a picture of me and Eddie. He's like, dude, that's not <laughs> what I asked for. <laughs> It was just like me and Eddie hanging out. Um, and he's like, dude, I need a video. And the next day he DMs me and I still haven't sent it to him. He goes, all right, you're in. <laughs> like, all right, but, but, you know, like Reed, we connected that one day when you guys were filming for the who's number one championships at Oceanside, right? Like, yeah. man, you took a you chance on to me, you know, and then, and then on the show, you know, you guys were just the best man and, and instilled a lot of confidence in me, truly changed my life. You know, now I'm full-time jujitsu chasing my dream. Like as John Jock said, you know, only one life, you know? So man, I'm super grateful for you guys. And, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, well, you had I'll, a lot I'll of people rooting it. for you and, and, and a lot of people telling us about you yeah. and that we need to that we need to do something with this Renee guy. We need to check out this Renee guy, you know? So definitely we, we, we heard a lot about you. So we we're excited to, you know, get you on the show. Fucking worked out perfect. I, I don't know if I told you this, but on episode one, we did a lot of screenings of, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to try to figure out what order we were going to put the fights in, you know, for episode mm -hmm. one, we were, you know, kind of like playing with lots of different orders of, of the fights and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we would, after we do Q and A's after with and mostly non jujitsu people, you know, people didn't know anything right. about jujitsu. Mm -hmm. And, but it was like literally everybody when we would sit down and say, all right, who is your favorite character? They would all say Renee. They, everybody would say Dang. Renee. It, it was like the craziest thing. So it's one of the reasons why we led with, with your and J rods match, you know, yeah. just because it's, it, it for some reason, everybody seemed like they, they really connected with you, uh, on, at least on episode one and throughout the show. So, yeah, nice, man. Well, like I, I what I've been telling people is like, you know, the show just allowed everyone to show their own character, you know, and man, that's me, bro. Chill. Like nothing is going to really stress me out too much. You know, like, dude, like people that were stressing out in the house, like Mike, for example, like, dude, we literally had our dreams. Like we literally just had to do challenges and interviews and <laughs> hang out with each other and didn't have to go anywhere you know like had food paid for us picanha juice like everything acai man like there was nothing to complain about you know it was the easiest two weeks i mean definitely not the easiest two weeks but on, on terms of like what i have to deal with regularly like you know like i drive here do this do this like it was the best time of my whole life you know so um it was you 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 guys thought about it though so much in terms of like planning it you know a jiu-jitsu guy planned it because of like how things were went, ran and then the production and putting it together also important to incorporate the jiu-jitsu guys like knowing the scenes like man you guys hit it out of the park you know and um i just hope like the views and everything else like really work out well for you guys because um yeah it's like dude I, i've gotten probably like at least 20 people hitting me up that have never followed my jiu-jitsu or friends with me but I'm like, dude, I'm hooked on freaking who's next. I'm like, dude, you've never, ever liked a comment or, or liked a picture of anything of me doing jiu-jitsu. Like, and now you're like, this is sick. <laughs> like, all right, cool. Come train, you know? Um, so, uh, yeah, it's been sick to, to get those people into jiu-jitsu. And, um, yeah. yeah, just yeah, super, that's what we're super we thankful. We all love jiu-jitsu so much, right? We need, need to get those people who, who don't circle our, our world. And so try mm -hmm. to teach those people, you know, about jujitsu and hopefully get some new fans of the sport get some new fans uh for, for you guys and everything like that so glad for to sure. hear it's working for out sure. 
Renee, yeah, uh, no, Connor, anything else going down? Uh, not not from the uh, comment section, but I did want to point out um, episodes one through six, the whole season, will be coming out on YouTube after the episode six release, which is next Wednesday. It will be coming out at some point within the next week. So if you have any casual fan, fans, if you have any friends, uh, feel free. You'll be able to send them the link for the whole show and binge it all next week. So that's super exciting. Yep, trickling it out on YouTube, I believe, uh, June 27th, maybe. <coughs> Might be, uh, check our YouTube channel. Might be putting putting them out um, after that. So, mm-hmm. so definitely keep an eye on the YouTube channel. Renee, where can everybody can follow you on, on social media and everything? Where can everybody get those shirts? Uh, yeah, so this is uh, everything you go through the, my Instagram, but um, I actually just dropped my website, too. So it's just R-E-N-E-S-O-U-S-A.com. Um, just all my sponsors, all my gear, everything's on there. Um, I know flow might still you guys might be out but i sent you guys like a five pound bag of that flow to go so hopefully you guys got to enjoy some of that um i sell some so that's just a coffee blend that we have um but yeah like uh dude if we could do a buggy choke the world seminar that would be freaking sick um and i'm not like saying that i want half the money but i'll I'll say i'll go 70 30 (laughs) and Uh sewer rat does the other half you know (laughs) and um because like that's that's the thing like if we get him you know, like we just, we have to take advantage of his time, you know, mm-hmm. have to just learn those, those I, techniques. Is that the, like from is that the real f- riff Japan, you know, in his, in his music video. That's what he said. You think, you think we're playing or what? <laughs> you think we're playing? I didn't even remember when I said you. that to Like Reed looked at me. He's like, what are you, like it's not a fucking game, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, he's real, bro. Like I, I texted him that I think both of you guys texted me back. Like, is that the real riff rap? And I was like, dude, what else would it be, you know? Like <laughs> <laughs> so many other things. Um, Literally anything else. <laughs> Could be no, dude, himself. That's yeah. that's not how maybe Mike Rackshawn would order a dollar store freaking riff rap. <laughs> not sewer rap, bro. Not sewer rap, dude. Come on. Yeah, but that's even that's like almost as funny of a story if he got a like a riff raff impersonator. Like that's just like another right. step, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's too riffraff to not be riffraff, you know. Yeah. I've checked it a couple times. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, and then and then you're, you're going out on a seminar tour, do some privates if they want to want to get on the seminars or or, or uh, do some privates with you. That go through your Instagram as well. Instagram or website, both both direct you to my calendar and both direct you to like everything. So everything is on my website and stuff. And QR code on my privates thing go bring you right to my website or like just on my Instagram. Everything's through the link in my bio. So. Really there appreciate everyone's up. support. Really appreciate you guys so much. You know, don't worry, Reed. I know your neck hurts, but I'll buggy choke you lightly next time I see you. And <laughs> give you those details. Yeah, for um, sure. Looking forward to it. If you guys want to up your buggy choke game and your leg lock game, hit up Renee. He might be coming through your your town soon. Renee, as always, brother, so good seeing you. I hope you enjoy uh, episode six too. Uh, that comes out next week, and I'm sure we'll talk soon, man. Yeah, thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. See you guys later. <laughs> there you go. Milo and Renee jumping Dang, on the show. You're Always remembered. good to talk to, to Renee, right? Yeah, the, the man. And uh, great to see. Uh, great to get that feedback from him. It, it's nice to really, like, for me, it's nice to hear what all of these guys enjoyed about living in that house, being in that house together. And, like, yeah. makes you jealous a little bit, yeah, right? Both, like, both I'm I talking about. I kind of want to just do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? But even both I'm talking about, like, how that group is still kind of in contact with each other. Yeah, yeah. Each other. Like, it's great to see that, like, that stuck together. Mm-hmm. The camaraderie kind of kept going even even beyond the show. Yeah, that's a cool by- byproduct that I didn't didn't see coming, for sure. What would you think about, about Renee and Sue Rat, Connor? That was great. I, I'm most impressed that you remembered the dog's name. Shout out Milo. <laughs> but that I, I was thinking as he was held up, I was like, what is that little dude's name? But <laughs> then he re-latched on to that one. Uh, yeah, man, it was super fun. We got a lot of people in the comments section saying that they loved episode five. Uh, you know, real fun stuff. I think. What did you think of episode five, Connor? Dude, I loved it. Honestly, my favorite part was the, the paddle board. Uh, you know, like I, I've seen, uh, you know, Renee and Jansen's background before. So that was always he's like cool to see how it came together but the new thing was the paddleboard i wasn't able to be there like in person and i was watching how they strategized they were there's a little Hilarious, bit of right yeah there's a little bit of malice in there there was some <laughs> there's some real uh you know machiavellian plays but it was fun sick sick 
The, f- the finale comes out next week, the uh, June 22nd, guys. Make sure you guys tune in on Flow Grappling for that one. The finale is crazy, or uh, the finale of the, of the show is crazy. We set the final for July 14th. Um, I think it's unexpected. I think it's, uh, you know, both these final matches are crazy. We got another fun challenge for you here. Um, but, uh, C- uh, Corey, anything else you wanted to say? No, I'm excited to see uh, the semifinals, right? Episode 6. And then, uh, of course, make sure you tune in for the Asia Oceania trials, the last ADCC trials. We're going to figure out the last people who get their invites on Saturday night. Heck yeah. uh, it'll be Sunday morning over in Australia. Heck yeah, really looking forward to that. Of course, Isaac is competing there. we got a bunch of other uh, guys who are competing on there who, who are OGs on, on Flow, so that should be fun. Um, Connor, any last words, brother? No, man, make sure you're uh, staying tuned to the Instagram. We're going to have some uh, not only cool cool stuff for uh, who's next, but also fight announcements coming out, all the news. You guys know the deal. Absolutely. As always, everybody, thanks for tuning in to Who's Number One podcast. We'll see you guys next week. Os. Peace. Next time on Who's Next. I remember waking up to like loud noises, and then all of a sudden I was like, something's gonna happen. Good morning, Martino! You're gonna make a game today! All right, here we go. Let's the final team challenge You guys better go hard as fuck. This is the semifinal. Three, two, one. Hollywood Mike, Greg show up in his Lambo, limo, ice cream paint job. The whole thing was out of this world. Lord, watch over us, protect these men going into the finals. We're going for the time of our lives, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Get it. And we take it over. I'm going to break Kyle out there. I'm going to break him mentally and physically. I just can't wait to dominate this little dude, man. Take it over. Jansen versus Isaac, the battle of the two number one picks.